Hi friends, welcome back to Food Prints. I'm so very glad that you're here with me because the big idea we're exploring today is seeds have structures that help them travel. Now the first thing you're probably wondering is, what is a structure? That's an excellent question. When we're talking about the structure of a seed, we mean how that seed is organized or how it is built. Another important word for us today is disperse. That's what we call it when a seed spreads around or moves in different directions. So today, we're gonna see how the structure of a seed, how it's built, can sometimes affect how the seed disperses or spreads around. That's why today's lesson is called seed dispersal. You probably notice many different trees and flowers and plants as you walk down your street or around your neighborhood. When those plants are ready to make new plants, they grow seeds. But most plants don't want their seeds to simply fall straight down. Because if the seeds fall straight down to the ground, the new plants will have no room to grow. They'll get all tangled and squished together and maybe not even survive. That's why most plants want their seeds to spread out or disperse. Remember that word? If the seeds spread out and give each other enough space, the new plants will have more room to grow up big and strong. And someday they'll make their own seeds. So how do plants disperse their seeds? Well, as we talked about earlier, it depends on their structure or how they're made. For example, let's look at a dandelion. You've probably noticed that after a dandelion loses its petals, it grows a fluffy top. Well, that fluffy top is made up of seeds. And these seeds are so light, they can be blown around or dispersed. By the slightest breeze, they can even be dispersed when you blow on them and make a wish. The seeds drift on the wind, sometimes moving a few feet, sometimes very long distances. Wherever they land, they'll try to establish roots and grow a new dandelion plant. There are other seeds that disperse in the wind too. Have you ever seen these little things flying around where you live? Some kids call them helicopters. Well, these are actually the seeds of a maple tree. Maple trees are large and their branches spread very wide. So in order for a tiny maple seed to get the sunlight it needs to grow, it needs to fly away from the shade of the mother tree. That's why maple seeds have this unique structure. They're built with this wing that allows them to ride in the wind and disperse far away. Other plants structure their seeds to move in a different way. In fact, there are some plants that shoot their seeds like a little rocket ship, seriously. A good example of this is the oxalis plant. When the seeds of an oxalis plant are ready, they burst out from the plant and land far enough away to make a new plant. It's pretty cool, right? So now we know that some seeds travel through the air, but guess what? Some seeds are structured or built to travel in the water. And a good example of this is the seed of a palm tree, which is a coconut. When coconuts fall from palm trees, they often keep rolling until they land in water. But that's okay, it's fine because the way a coconut is structured, the center of a coconut is hollow and the hard shell on the outside dries out, which makes it lighter. When the coconut hits the water, it floats. And that means it can travel great distances in the ocean and land somewhere else to make a new palm tree. Sometimes he's got a little help dispersing or spreading around. And very often that comes from animals. A good example of this is acorns, which are the seeds of an oak tree. Acorns fall from the oak tree and are scooped up by hungry squirrels who love to eat them. The squirrels then carry the acorns away and bury them in the ground to eat later. But the squirrels don't always remember where they bury them. Silly squirrels. And those acorns that actually stay in the ground can grow up to be big, strong, oak trees. 
Another way animals help disperse seeds is by eating them. Many animals love eating fruits, which have seeds inside. So while they're picking the fruit apart, the seeds often drop to the ground. Even seeds that are eaten by animals get dispersed. That happens when the animal poops out the seeds and they land on the ground. Animals can spread seeds other ways too. Sometimes seeds are structured with sticky or prickly edges that cling to animals as they just pass by. The seeds then travel with the animals until they fall off sometime later and take root in a new place. And guess what? This doesn't only happen with animals. Have you ever taken a walk in the woods and found a burr stuck on your socks or on the leg of your pants? Well, that burr is a seed and it is built to take a ride on an insect or an animal or even your clothes. Another way seeds disperse or spread around is by farmers and gardeners. They take seeds and plant them exactly where they want them to grow. This is how farmers and gardeners grow most of the delicious food that you and I love to eat. Now you know some of the many different ways that seeds disperse. And you also know that seeds can travel in different ways depending on how they are structured or built. So the next time you go for a walk outside, be on the lookout for some of the ways that plants are spreading their seeds. Thank you so much for joining me today for this lesson about seed dispersal. I'll see you all next time.